I'm about to get down and dirty and do the uh, rust proofing on this truck uh, inside the chassis and I'm going to show you in a little bit better detail. First of all I'm just going to give a quick shout out to a postcard from Raoul. This is his little 90s just finished. He must be pleased as punch with that. Look at that. Isn't it a beauty? That's what you're aiming for. Thanks for that Raoul. And another update. The, uh, I just defrosted the propane tank and this time I got 1.2 litres so I hope you're all keeping note of that one it's looking quite a fat yet but it still ain't split so what am I going to do? well if you followed on from what I was doing uh, the other day um, I washed out the the sand and the dirt from the inside now I'm going to just now sweep all that up because I've got to put some plastic on the floor but it would be interesting to see exactly how much has come out of this now I have had a bit of a harassment with my boiler and this is why it's been so long between uh, finishing this video because I washed out the chassis and I left it kind of high up so it would get air around it and it dry out oh and my boiler decided to stop working so <laughs> I had to fix that that took me about two or three days to work out what it was stupid uh, MOSFET chip was getting too hot in the controller Anyway, let me sweep up this and then I'll show you the equipment I'm going to use. So there you go, look. That's my foot next to that big pile of sand and dirt and mud. There might be a few uh, bits of wood chip in it, but the whole point was if that was lying in the bottom of the chassis, if you put wax on the top of it, it would never work through. The wax would never absorb into that so it's best to wash it out this was an XMOD vehicle uh, from in, but used in Canada so it had been used in rivers and all sorts of things this was one of the better ones if you remember that LS conversion I was doing last year or was it the year before it was blocked solid with mud in fact so much so we lifted it up with a forklift and then power washed it coming down, we had to drill some big holes in that to get that out but it was, it was worth doing uh, why didn't I do that first? I didn't know but let's have a look inside shall we at the, uh, I'm just looking up to see if I've got my camera here and see if we can see inside that chassis I'm not sure, I can't promise anything but let's have a look I'm not sure if you can pick up off this because I can't see what you're seeing but the light in the oh there you go you can see a picture there of the inside of the chassis look um, let's move it around a bit you can see they were dip painted and you see that that's the bottom of the chassis and you can see all the little ribs and things like that inside there's a little bit of dust in there but that's not too bad but perhaps you can see with it being painted on the inside when these were dip painted from the factory this is why it's very difficult if you galvanize an old chassis is getting the paint out of the inside and that's why we're waxing it it's a good strong chassis I'm not problem with that but it was never really protected from new which is a bit of a shame really but this is what we're going to do we're going to inject it with a spray wax inside and that will coat and stay on there to stop any future humidity now this is a 1990 chassis so it is like 30 years old so it's done quite well um, but I don't know why they weren't injected with wax from the factory it was so stupid I don't, uh, I don't know why they didn't do it uh, I mean they didn't know where these trucks were going to go to but it would have saved us an awful lot of trouble so let's get set up it's nice and dry inside there that's good I had a quick look on all sides so that's nice and dry and there's no dust and dirt so that's all got washed out so let's get on with that as I may have mentioned in a previous video I'm going to use this uh, Protec pressure sprayer it's got an aluminium pot and you can put different nozzles and attachments on here it is a pressure pot unlike a siphon like these Schultz guns this is a Schultz gun you can you can cover an awful lot of area with one of these underneath if you're going to spray it all underneath but I'm just going to concentrate on the chassis today so these are good for big surfaces but this is good for getting into cavities so I'm just going to hook up uh, a lance onto here and again I think I showed you in a previous video that it's supposed to have a 360 degree nozzle 
and I just blanked off the end with a screw and punched some holes in and this I'm gonna I've got it linked up to an airline and it's got some thinners in this gun so I'm gonna try and spray it without spraying my camera there you see so it's gonna make a very fine mist I see some of them holes are a bit knackered I'll have to have a play around with that but it's going to be good. Now the product I'm using, like I say, it's uh, April uh, annual rust proofing, so you're supposed to do it every year, but really you're supposed to do it every year on wheel arches and stuff like that. Yeah. It's thick and gooey. See? Now I thin this down when I'm doing chassis with a little bit of what we call Varsol over here, it's, uh, it's turpentine substitute. But when you see it coming out of the tub, you'll understand why we cut it down. You see? It's really thick. And we want that to pass through that nozzle. It is a mucky job. It's a, it's a job I hate doing, but we have to do it. And like I say, a little bit of Varsol I mean, we're just talking a splash. We're just talking a light, light splash of Vassal in there. Or, or Terps. Why, why that? Because it's not very flammable. And also the Terps will help carry this into all those little nooks and crannies. So. Let's get it on. Now, this time I am going to wear gloves because I think we're going to get absolutely cacked up to the eyeballs. I'm going to put a mask on. Unfortunately, I found a load of dust masks outside in the garbage down, down the street. So that's good. It's one thing about COVID, you get plenty of free masks. So, let's get set up. I hate rust proofing inside. I never usually do it, but in this case, a customer wants the car pretty damn sharpish. I don't want to leave it outside in salt, you know, because it's going to get driven in salt. Uh, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. Uh, as you can see on the desk, I've put a piece of plastic down. And I've, I've transferred this big mixing bowl into a small jug. And I'm, I've rinsed out this container and I'm going to fill it up. Now you want plenty of cloths and plastic sheets for this jug. Because honestly, it is a mess. So there's a full jug. You can see why I've got gloves on it, because it's just absolutely khaki. Now fortunately when Bill sent me a, a heater from out west, he packed it using these absorbent cloths which are absolutely brilliant. <laughs> right, so, let's get busy and squirting, as the bishop said to the actress. Right, I'm going to do this side first, uh, just to show you. I'm not going to show you absolutely everything, but I'll, because sh once I get busy, well, it would be nice if somebody followed me around with the camera, but I can't do both at once. Uh, what I'm going to do is start here, uh, I inject, push the lance as far forward as I can and then draw it backwards. Alright, that's how we sort of do it, maybe do it once or twice and do it slowly, but this will give you an idea. Um, yeah, I like doing it outside because otherwise you've got plastic sheets and trying to get this stuff off the floor once it's sort of semi-dry is a nightmare because you can't put the steam cleaner on because it's too damn cold. Well, it's not cold, but if I put my steam cleaner on in here, I get, it get, gets so steamy you can't see a damn thing. I don't know. Let me get on with it. I can't put it off anymore. Oh. Right. Off we go. We'll do a test first to see what the pattern's like. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> you can see already just doing that it sprays everywhere so 
Let's have a go. You can see how far up the chassis you can get. And that's the speed you want to be. Just point back slowly. This stuff will creep. You can see it dripping, I can see it dripping out the chassis now. Right, I'm getting to me. You can see it dripping out of there halfway along. So now what I'm going to do is turn that hose the other way around. And point it up the chassis the other way. If I can. Ah, there we go. There's lots of obstructions and. Uh, sorry, you didn't see that, did you? There's lots of obstructions and restrictions with this. You can probably see here. I now just put the uh, wiring harness on top of the chassis. I don't put it through the middle because it's, it's too much of a mess about. So oh, here we go again. Take your time. There we go. Now at the same time, whilst I'm here at this section, there's a cross member that goes across here. This hose is just nice. We're poking into there. And fill in that one. This is what's called Sod's Law. I've got all the floor covered with plastic except for that bit where it's leaking out. Also at the same time, all those little box sections. You see what I mean? Now I've got quite a way up to here. So now I'm going to, oh, damn it! Now I'm going to start from this end. Oh, all my plastic sheets are all getting dragged around. Camera's all covered in tar. But the fumes off it are not good. I'm just going to give this a head start up here, if it will. No, it won't. This is a problem, you see. If you put a little lance in, you can't get in. That's why I dig these, drill these pretty great big holes, so you can get in. But there's, there's brackets and all sorts inside. Lots of obstacles. Especially around these uh, suspension mounts. There we go. Uh, there we go, see? Play around with it a bit and it'll be alright.
There we are. So that's that's big the big sections already done. I'm going to also put some uh, product down these tubes for the uh, for the body. Looking at this when it's coming out, I need a little bit more Varsol. So I'm going to get on with this, and we'll be back when we finish. But you can see it's drippy stuff, but it gets it does a nice spray. Back in a bit. With the uh, inside all done, now I'm going to use this lance and just give it a quick spray over on the outside. <laughs> That water's off the, uh, the deck. Trust me to run out. Back in a bit. This camera's going to clean up. What a mess. See why you put plastic down here. Eh? That's a good picture for you, isn't it? Look at that. Um, so the car's all done, it's all sprayed. Now I have to clean the floor. Putting that plastic down was a complete waste of time. The airline just pulled it all over the place. So I'm using my steam cleaner and the chemical to wash the floor off. It's coming off well, but I can't see the bloody thing because the steam and the... is just too much. Anyway. I don't know if we can see around the car. Ah, oh, yeah, you can see it now. So it looks nice. Everywhere's been shot up there and inside the chassis. I actually used um, there was a 20 litre pail, and I used 11 litres on this car. 11 litres. Now you're going to ask me, am I going to use my uh, um, camera to look inside the chassis? Well, I tried it, but unfortunately it kept getting tar on it, so we'll have to leave it at that. But um, I need to wash off the exhaust with a piece of Varsol and uh, rag to get that off. But it's had a really, really good coating now, so that should be alright for a year or two. Yeah. thing is now trying to clean my floor. Oh, man. I tell you, this is why I don't like using it in here, especially in winter. Just clean the floor. Anyway, so um, I'm going to show you what will happen to this. It'll, it won't go shiny forever. It'll just go a little bit dull. And it'll, it'll be thick like wax. It's almost like wax oil, if you've, if you've been familiar with that. But it goes on a lot better. I've got the brakes to clean up. That's why I didn't put any uh, dust shields on these brakes. Uh, I tried to avoid them, but uh, there's one or two little tiny bits there I've missed. I'll do that with a brush. But apart from that, it's not looking too bad. That means now I can put the wheels on. Oh, you should see the wheels. What a, what a carry on we had with those. And uh, there's a winch bumper coming on Tuesday, and hopefully, then this can go. Right, let's go and have a look outside, and show, I'll show you what um, I'll show you what the uh, finish looks like after a few years. There is a few runs on it, but it doesn't matter. It's not a top coat. Oh, 
<laughs> God, but it's all uh, it's all well protected now. Really well protected, and that stuff will soak into any joints and creeps in. Oh, one thing I noticed, I should have told you. And if you can see, let's go and have a look at the other side because it's in a bit brighter light. On the back uh, cross members, um, I always box them in now because you're never going to put grab handles on or anything like that on. It's a waste of time. So I, uh, I just box them in to stop all the dirt getting up there. And of course with those mud guards, well, it's not going to get anything chucked up. But it's always just, just in case. You never know. When I started this pro project, I didn't know what it was going to be like. You know, so uh, that's that. So have a look at the car outside and we'll see you later. So if you want to see what it'll look like in a year or two, it'll be like this. All right, it's not shiny black, but there's no rust on it. You know, it gets a bit of road dirt in, but I'd rather have road dirt than rust, but any day of the week. Yeah, so this, it does work, that product. Uh, should I use something else? I don't know. I, I'd like to stick what I know. Should I have used Crown? Well, I couldn't get it in quantities big enough, if you see what I mean. I might do some crowning on the bulkhead, but uh, I just wanted to show you what it looked like. Mm -hmm.